Hello and welcome again to Conservative TV. We are going to be having a discussion with my friend and former National Campaign Manager for the Conservative Party, Professor Tom Flanagan. The topic of this forum is on the need to allow property rights for Indians living on reserves. As you will see, the lack of property rights has been one of the major reasons why in many cases Indians have remained in relative poverty. Stay tuned and enjoy. And so without further ado then, I would like to welcome Rob and invite him to say a few words. Well, uh, first off, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, we're honored yet again to have uh, my favorite professor from the University of Calgary, uh, Tom Flanagan, with us tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you a few stories, I think, because I, I think that's a good way to introduce Tom. Um, there's a, there a lot of political science professors that I had when I was at the University of Calgary who would often pontificate about politics, but not be all that intimately involved. Now, Professor Flanagan is the opposite of that because he's actually taking time off sabbatical in a sense to help out with the Federal Conservative Party, uh, help out the leadership campaigns and various things. So he's, he not only teaches it, but he uh, lives it, eats it, and breathes it. So uh, he's actually been practical in that way, in, in a way that a lot of them haven't. Um, as well, he's a prolific author, and I think he's going to talk to you tonight about some of his writings. I was there for the book launch in Ottawa, uh, and I look forward to hearing more. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take in all of uh, what he had to say in Ottawa because we were busy voting, which we just got back from. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to briefly kind of introduce the subject. Um, you know, property rights is so key to politics. It's fundamental to the, to the heart of really why we engage in politics. I, I think, you know, the Code of Amurabi, uh, going back many thousand years, uh, talking about, uh, you know, if you build a house and you do it improperly and, and uh, you know, somehow compromise my property, you can be punishable by death, you know, etc. Uh, we move forward uh, to King Canute, uh, you know, in the British Isles and the Danish invasion and uh, some of their concepts of property and, and uh, the right to, you know, bear arms in a sense with regard to your sword and such. Uh, and then Magna Carta, running me 1215. Uh, you know, we have uh, the actual limitations of the Leviathan, you know, the, uh, the rights of the king and the monarchy vis-a-vis -vis your property. 1917, we see the Russian Revolution and what is obviously the failure of collective property rights. And now, of course, we have Tom Flanagan to talk about that very subject. <laughs> He's the latest magnum opus in the subject. Um, but uh, we're, we're honored to have you here today, Tom. And I realize as well, he... Uh, uh, his, uh, his 37th anniversary is coming up, and uh, he, he made uh, uh, a special accommodation to be here with us tonight, and some sacrifice with regard to his wife, Marianne, uh, to be able to be here. So I tremendously appreciate that, and Dr. Trump, we look forward to what you have to say about property. Okay. Thanks, Rob. No, actually, I, he's got a, oh, okay. I'm, I'm got a pack here. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have to make any accommodation because the people organizing the dams canceled it, so we couldn't go. Uh, and the anniversary is not until next week anyway, so uh, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, let me talk a little bit about property rights uh, in general, and then let me use that to lead into the topic of my latest book. It's called Beyond the Indian Act, Restoring Aboriginal Property Rights. It's a bookseller for pages in the back, and they have copies of not only of this book, but some of my other books on politics as well, so if anybody's interested. Uh, and I hope you will be, and I'll be happy to sign sign anything that you might buy. Uh, and, uh, we'll do that from pages. Anyway, let me just read you a couple of sentences from the speech that, that Louis Riel made uh, to the judge at his trial in Regina. This was after the jury had uh, convicted him of treason, and then he had a chance to address the uh, court. And uh, I've always liked these lines. Um, they, they really capture something about human beings. He says, God cannot create a tribe without locating it. We are not birds. We have to walk on the ground. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious that we're not birds and we're not fish. We're terrestrial animals. We can't climb trees. We can't swim. But we can't live anywhere except on the ground. So we have to have a, a relationship to land. But the relationship is complicated because of uh, the complexities of human nature. We are, a, we are a social animal. We can only live in communities. There's no record of human beings ever living a uh, solitary existence. You we know, you really couldn't even survive living on our own. Um, so 
there's a bit of a dilemma there. We are, of course, individuals, and as individuals, we have to be self-interested. We have to first look after ourselves and uh, our, our close relatives. But at the same time, we also are members of larger communities, and we, we care about those communities as well. So this, this generates a complicated relationship to, to land. Now, the way we've worked this out in, in modern Western civilization, and the terminology